Nobody could ever accuse me of not being all in. You want to know the secret? You want to cut this short 40 minutes early? I'm not going to. <laughs> the secret is, you. when are you going to go all in? What are you waiting for? Waiting for the company to get better? Waiting for Egon to be more all in? You're waiting for a better heritage ownership program, which is now only the number one in the whole industry? You're Woo! waiting for it to get better? You're waiting for better product partners like Manulife, who just came on board? Who are you waiting for? Transamerica investing $100 million into our technology? Like, what else is there? The sooner you go all in, there's two days in WFG. The day you start, the day you go all in. And for some people, between the, those two dates is five, 10, and even 15 years before they go all in. I've seen people here 15 years haven't gone all in yet, wondering what the secret is. They keep coming to the events. They keep wondering what the secret is. You know what the secret is? You're not all in yet. You are not all in yet. That was my advantage, that I went all in. So I was rolling, guys, 2006, 2007. I'm feeling pretty good, got a lot of confidence, got a lot of swagger. 2008, my chrome starts to get worked up again. I'm four years into the business, I'm starting to get sick, failed all the medications, starting in the hospital once a month again, flashbacks to my childhood, the Remicade wore off, all the, all the drugs I was on started to wear off. There wasn't enough prednisone in the world that could keep me healthy. And then 2009 was my year of my reckoning. 2009, I spent 250 days in the hospital. January 6th to November 30th, almost that whole period of time. I had to have my rectum taken out, my colon taken out, and eventually all uh, eight feet of my bowel. Eight, eight out of the 21 feet had to get taken out. And I think back to that year, and that was the absolute rock bottom of my life. I lost all my confidence, lost all my swagger. I was five years into the business. I was down to 10 licensed agents. And I don't have enough time to tell you that whole story. That's for another day. That was a tough year. But you know what? Some of you guys have been through some tough things too. That was my cross that I had to bear. And I'll tell you what, you don't want my problems and I don't want your problems, Bradford. <laughs> Here's the reality. If, you took, if we all put our problems in a bag today and we shook it all up and we all drew a new problem, everybody would want their own problem back. <laughs> so stop complaining. Stop complaining about your problems. I get it, life's happening. Life's happening to all of us. Every single winner in this room is going through a storm. The challenge that sometimes we have is we don't think that the winners are going through everything. And we think as soon as the, as soon as the clouds part, and as soon as everything's okay, and as soon as the wind blows the right direction, man, I'm gonna hit hard as soon as everything's good. That doesn't work like that. You gotta win anyway. You gotta win in spite. No matter what. Man, I couldn't wait to get out of the hospital. November 30th, I get out of the hospital, I'm 123 pounds. I'm like 198 right now, so imagine me 123. No hair, face is sunken in, no veins left on my body. All the veins, every, every vein in my body had been taken. Every jugular, every vein had a, at some point had some kind of a needle in it. Pick line in the heart. It was just, it was, it was, it was my year of reckoning. And it was December 30th, 2009. My, my new girlfriend just sat with me for a year in the hospital. Bless her soul. My dad's like, you better marry that girl. <laughs> I'm like, geez, I know. I'm going to. Trust me. My wife's like, hey, hon, let's go here for New Year's. I said, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go to the office uh, for New Year's. She's like, what do you mean? I said, I just want to be alone on New Year's Eve. December 31st, 2009, I spent New Year's Eve by myself. Earlier in the day, I went to Staples before it closed. I went and got a whiteboard. And I went to the office. It was Nobody was there, of course. And I, and I, those stupid tapes you put on the boards, it's the last time I taped the board. <laughs> I was ended, ended it right there. So I put 50 squares on my board. And at the top of my board, I wrote, Steve Holbrook, the comeback kid. And I sat in my chair for what felt like two or three hours. It might have only been 30 or 40 minutes, but I sat there all night. And I visualized the comeback. And I had 10 licenses in my base shop and 14 licenses total in my super base. Yes, killing it. Killing it, 14 <laughs> super base licenses. Oh my God, he's on fire. And I sat there and I visualized the comeback. And I wrote out in my notebook, 
We will be known as the Sutter's Dream Team. We will be known as the best trained team. We will be known as the tightest knit team. We will be known as the hardest working, best prepared team. We will be known as the most consistent, and best attended team in all of WFG. And that's what, I wrote, that's what I wrote up New Year's Eve. An absolute rough one. When four or five people in Camp Hierarchy were smoking me. Smoking me. I was getting smoked by Jolly, great friend of mine, Lynn Blanken. Cameron Dunbar was the MVP that next January. I was getting worked. I was fourth in the golf score. I walked stage one time that next event, one time. And I said, as long as God gives me enough strength to get up in the morning and get out of the house and get my clothes on, I said, I'm never going back to this place ever, ever, ever again. In 2010, we started to build. We went from 10 licenses in our base End of 2011, we had 26 licenses. And I'll save you the whole story. We'll fast forward to 2024. From rock bottom, two months ago, we just promoted our 22nd direct SMD. And the reason I'm telling you that, because at some point, you're gonna have to make a decision that this is as bad as it's gonna get. At some point, you're gonna have to make a decision that you're gonna stop the bleeding. And you're not going to go backwards anymore. That you're done with the start, stop, start, stop, start, stops. That was killing me, and it's killing you and your business. You're going to have to stop with the mindset as soon as everything, soon as everything is good, look out for me. That's you making an excuse to be average. And that's not serving you, just like it wasn't serving me. You, know, you want to know the stat I'm most proud of this month? been 116 months in a row of double digit recruiting in our base shop. The prayer, the thing that you've been waiting for, it's here. This is it, this can't take away all of your problems. But man, I missed $2 million last month by $120. $126 to be exact, or $23 to be exact. And you know what? We still got a lot of stuff going on in our life that, that, that money can't help with, but I'll tell you what, when you have zero financial stress, my God. People are like, man, how you been in surgical remission since 2009? I said, man, I, you know, they paid me a quarter million dollars the other month. I said, that really helps with my stress levels. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna show you guys my slides. You guys good? Yeah. yeah. Wait, you gotta show up. And when I mean show up, I mean show up. I don't mean wander in here, right? Like a, just like, like a wounded duck. I mean show up. Bring energy. Be excited. Show up. So many people, they, 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 they come, but they don't show up. Ed's like, man, if you can, if you can show up on time with the game plan, you will beat 90% of people in WFG. If you can show up with a game plan, you'll beat 90% of people. Most people either don't show up or they show up with no game plan. Get a game plan. I said, I say, I always say, what's the last 10%, Ed? He goes, brother, that's the dog fight. That's you and you and Shanaka coming at each other in fighter jets. That's the dog fight. You guys want to get to the dog fight era. That's fun. You're, child, you're, you're going with beasts, right? You're, you're, you're running against the Infantes. Good, good luck. You better, you better fuel your tank if you're going against the Infantes, right? That's a dog fight. But you got to show up. No excuses. No excuses. Now, like, come on. If something serious is going on, and if you don't take your kid to the hospital, it's not going to end well, give me a break. You need to do that. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Don't email me after. But Steve, that's all I'm talking about. I'm talking about showing up. Showing up. No excuses. Number three, you gotta value consistency over everything. When I when I when I do mentorship calls with up and coming associates, most of them they lack confidence and they lack belief. You know what the number one, you know what the number one helper of a lack of belief is? Consistency. Day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out. You gotta get some small wins every day. You can't work out once a month for eight hours. I wish. 
I just walk the whole day off, get it all done in one, one day. Dog. You know, I was telling my team the other day, I pay my tax installments weekly to the government, every week. And one of them was like, but why do you give, you know, the whole thing, why do you give the government taxes ahead of time when you can pay them at the end of the year? I said, because I get 52 wins in the year. Every single week I pay my taxes, I never get behind, and I stack up win after win after win after win. I am looking for wins. You gotta be consistent. You don't have to be extraordinary. You don't have to be the best speaker. You don't have to be the best closers. I got people that are so, so at closing, so, so at speaking, crushing people that are super talented, chasing the big fish, getting crushed. I have people that just show up to the office every day at the same time, make five phone calls that are just going like this. And they might've seemed like they were slow out of the gates, but now they're starting to pass everybody because their head's in the game. You ever see people that are like high, low, high, up, down, up, down, up, down. I have to have, to have another meeting with Skippy. <laughs> Skippy's up and Skippy's down, and Skippy's up and Skippy's down. They, they're at the office and then they're gonna work from home. And they rented an office and they're gonna work from home. It's just like, I'm up, I'm down, I'm up, I'm down. Why don't you just make a decision and be consistent? Why don't you just look at your leaders? Just do what they're doing. Just show up. I don't think that I'm best in any one thing in this entire company. But on a goal score of like showing up on time with the game plan, developing some skills, learning how to communicate, bringing a mid-level of energy, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at all the things. Pretty good at closing, not exceptional, pretty good at everything. Because I worked at it. Just be consistent. It's a long game. You know what happens if you're not consistent? You're gonna burn yourself up. You're gonna get way down in the trenches. You're gonna get so far behind. And then you're gonna be like, you ever like, I do this all the time. You ever like stop working out for like two or three months and you're like, you get like your new workout program. And it's like seven days a week, two hour workouts. And you're like, I'm just gonna annihilate this thing. Yeah, no. You're, you're like, you're like, I have no fat, no sugar, no cheat meals, seven days a week, two hour workouts. And you go from like kinda out of shape to overdo it. You're done in like four days because you can't sit yeah. down and go to the bathroom. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's like our business. You stop doing it, you lose all the momentum, this and that, right? Poor me, victim mindset, because we all do it. And then all of a sudden, you want to you want to go hard again. So I'm going seven days a week, 16 hour days. You want to say, I haven't heard from you in a while. Like, where are things at? Guys, just focus on consistency. You want to have a great marriage. You want to have a great relationship with your kids. You don't want to have to miss any super important things near your life. Just be consistent. But when you stop being consistent, you have to start missing things to catch up. Yes or yes? Yes. Right? Just be consistent. All right, number four, high levels of self-awareness. I told my CFPs this morning, I said, my job is to teach you how to think like an SMB. I said, when you go SMB, you don't get a phone call from me every day. So you have to teach yourself how to think. Self-awareness. Here's a great question. Is what I did yesterday enough to stay on track? Is what I did this week enough to stay on If I did Monday to Friday, every Monday to Friday for the next five years, is that gonna be enough? How about the month of September? Is what I did in the month of September on track to get me where I wanna go? How about so far for 2024? I am constantly taking a snapshot from 30,000 feet and going, am I on track? It's not complicated. Here's the reality. Most of us don't ask ourselves the right questions. Are really, the, the quality of questions that you ask in your business will determine how fast and how far you go. You can ask better questions. A great question is, hey, did I do enough this week to get me to my goal? And if you didn't, my, my challenge for October, on every Friday, at the end of every week in October, I want you to look at your schedule. Did I go on enough meetings to actually hit my goal? I went on 10. Were they in the right market? Yeah. Did I gather four, three, four info gathers? Yeah. Did I schedule the carrybacks for seven days out? Yeah. Did I make phone calls to book up the next week? Yeah. Yes. 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 When? Next week. Did I make my 20 dials that I needed to? Did I do my 10 meetings? 
Did I gather my four info gatherers? Did I do my three pulses? Yes. And you just stack it up and stack it up and stack it up. When we have low, low levels of self-awareness, guess what we do? Sure. Well, I would have made five grand, but IA took forever to approve my apps. <laughs> Man, I got so many, my, my favorite line, I got so many money moves that are waiting to hit. You're like, bro, you put that app in May. How do you count that mentally as activity for September? The reason you didn't make any money in September is because you didn't focus every week on new activity. It's not, it's not IA's fault. It's not Equitable Life's fault. It's not your leader's fault. It's not your spouse's fault. You gotta take responsibility. You gotta take a step back and look at your business and go, this is on me. And it's so simple to do, and it's so simple not to do, and that's the difference. Number five, you gotta get obsessed with a volume number, and then you track the results from there. So what's your number? Not the other way around. This is what most people do. They go, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna write 10,000 points this month. Now I do like, I do like setting goals like that. How many points do I write? But here's what people do. I'm gonna write 10,000 points this month. Three days in, three days in, they move 200 grand. They're good. I wrote 10K. And guess what happens? I stop. That's the last 10K to write for six Keep months. Going. <laughs> mm. I like the goal of writing 10,000 a month, 20,000 a month, recruiting two directs. You know what I like better? Six day qualified appointments a week. Greg, I'm gonna commit five qualified appointments a week. I'm gonna do two directs and I'm gonna write 10,000 points. And I know as the leader that if you committed to five qualified appointments a week, you'd actually probably do like three directs and like 25,000 points. So have a number in mind, but always, always, always drive volume. Make sense? Yeah. Yep. Make sense? Yeah. Make sense? Okay, if you told me homework, I want to get to five recruits a month in my base shop. I say it's 40 appointments a month. It's 10 a week as a team. So you do three recruits your first four days, carried over from like June, and if you're not running volume, those are the last three recruits you do all month. It happens all the time. If you get stuff that carries over early in the month, that's a bonus. You're still gonna run your 40 meetings. Yes or yes? Yeah. This is how you think in terms of volume. You drive the volume, and then you track the results. You drive the volume, and then you track the results. Number six. Being a leader is being the example. A lot of people, you don't think you can be a leader. Steve, I don't have any leadership skills. I don't have a big team yet. I can't speak like some of the leaders on stage. You don't need to worry about that. You just gotta be the most excited and most consistent person on your team. When I'm starting to work with people to get their confidence up, and I have this whole like get a win mentality, you know what I tell them? I call them right before the BPM. I say, hey Laura, you know how we do good news every week? She's like, yeah. I said, I want you to raise your hand for good news this week. Well, what, what, what do you mean? I said, just raise it for good news and tell them about that phone call that you made last week or yesterday. Okay, okay. Boom. Gets up there. She's excited. She's, she's emulating consistency. She made a call. Boom. Her downline, down, downline now sees her as a leader. So you don't think you can be a leader because you don't make 50, 60, 100,000 dollars a year yet. That's not how it works. You gotta be excited and you gotta be consistent. Number seven, ooh, I like this one. When I pull away from my leader, I'm setting a course towards darkness. <coughs> hey, you're either, you're either guiding towards the light or the darkness. It's either getting better or it's getting worse. You're either growing or you're dying. And you go one day without your leadership, okay. You go a couple days, three days, five days, and now you're on your own. Going through the landmines and all the challenges all by yourself. I'm gonna tell you something, don't take your SMD for granted. One day, you won't have an SMD. Because you'll either be an SMD or you won't. But one day, your SMD won't be as accessible as they are today. Don't take that person for granted. I had about 12 months with my SMD because I moved to Calgary and he focused on, on Edmonton. But I had about 12 months with like really intense contact with my SMD. I told my team in the Bay Shop all the time, I said, one day, you're not gonna get a phone call from me every day. 
One day, Curtis, you're not going to be on my Saturday morning CFT calls. One day, you're not going to be in my Wednesday night bake shop meetings. You're going to be on your own one day. So by you pulling away and you charting your course over here and you try to figure out all by yourself, it's going to take you 5, 10, 15 years longer than if you got aligned with your leader. You can't have it, it's gone. And here's the biggest challenge. You get on a roll, you book four or five meetings, you have a good start to the week, and you're feeling really good, the dopamine's high, cortisol's low, you're fired up, and then guess what happens? You stop doing what you did to get there. And then two meetings cancel, one teammate quits, one app gets declined, and you're right back where you were before momentum. Yes or yes? Yeah. When you have it, write this down. When you have it, you gotta double down on it. You gotta double down on it. Double down, I just launched this massive campaign in my hierarchy, October to, to April. Last year, we did October to April, we were 4.2 million super base points, and we went from 4.2 12 month rolling to 6.2 in seven months. We grew by 50% in seven months. And we already had momentum, but I needed to double down. So this year, another campaign. We have momentum. People say, man, you got some momentum. I'm doubling down on momentum. Because I know, I know I'm so afraid to go do less than 10 in my base shop, because as soon as I do nine, I feel like I lost momentum. I feel like I stopped getting the little wins. And as soon as I miss out on the little wins, I stop being consistent. And as soon as I stop being consistent, doubt and fear starts setting in. I'm just like an average, average, average dude that just focuses every month on small wins, getting momentum, keeping momentum, and doubling down. And I'm just really self-aware of what those things are. And I try and cut out all the other crap, even though there's days with my health that it's almost impossible to do. Number nine, winners understand that winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. Hey, I don't really care if you think you're competitive or not. You know what, you're never gonna be number one in anything, always. I can't remember, I, in my that. career, Greg, I've been number one maybe two or three times at one thing. Two or three times. Winning isn't everything, but I hope you wanna win. I hope you wanna compete. What kind of culture do you wanna build? One of the culture items I wrote down in 2010 is, we're competitive. Wanting to win is, I hope you wanna win. I hope you're hungry. I hope that's your team culture. I hope you talk about wanting to win. I hope you talk about climbing, competing. Because one day you won't be around to run your business. And what kind of a culture do you want left over? Do you want like a complacent, nobody's fighting, nobody's, nobody's competing culture? Or do you want a team of people that are trying to get better, trying to be their best, trying to climb up, trying to compete? That's the culture that I want. Number 10, my last one. Winners always take responsibility. Woo, but Steve, uh, you know, man, my team just not take responsibility. But Steve, my, 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 my spouse, take responsibility. You can't always control what happens to you, but you can sure as heck control how you think about it and your attitude and your energy around it. The day you start taking responsibility for where you're at in your life and your business is the day that everything changes. Stop waiting for the training to get better. Or your leader, leave whatever, more in the game, whatever the excuse is, it's, it's on you. Nobody's going to take credit for your wins. But I'm not taking credit for your losses either. If you fail here, that's on you. If you fail here, that's on you. It's not on Craig, it's not on your leaders up front, that's on you. If you win, that's on you too. But no one's coming to save you. No one's coming to do it. But isn't that why you started? Because you wanted to take control? Yes or yes? Yeah. You wanted the game ball. You said you wanted control. You wanted to control your income. You wanted to control your destiny. That's why you're here. So the moment's here. You gotta take it. Take the game ball. Just take it and run with it. Get some help. Lean into leadership. Show up. Compete. Be consistent. It's not complicated. It's actually a lot of fun when you get in the zone. This thing is so fun. Man, I met my wife in the company. All the men at my wedding party are now full time. My wife's family's in the business. Scott and Amber Babin just crushed through 300,000, about to over 400,000. You know the Babins. Gonna be at 400,000 here by the end of November. My sister, my only sister, and her husband in the business, 
just about to go CEO. Three kids. Man, been all over the world, haven't we? Been all over the world. 